Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Ines and I'm an artist and illustrator. And in this week's video, I thought I would start a new series, which is Drawing Mythical Creatures. As for my first video on this series, I thought I would use as my main subject a centaur. Do you know what centaurs are? If not, I will tell you. Centaurs basically are mythical creatures from the Greek mythology that have an upper body of a human and a lower body and legs of a horse. So I thought, since my last video was about how I draw horses using circles, if you haven't watched that already, what are you doing? In all seriousness, the knowledge from that video can always help with uh, drawing centaurs because if they are half a horse, half of the work is done. So what I will do is a series of sketches on my render sketchbook from Crescent. Now I know how to say it, even though you don't know how many times I've recorded this. I will do a series of sketches on my sketchbook. I will use a pencil that is a black wing, as my last video as well. And then uh, I will draw uh, both uh, male and female centaurs. I will choose one of the sketches and I will do a digital painting out of it. So if you are interested to see how I draw centaurs, please keep watching the video. I start the sketch by applying the method of circles to build the horse part of the centaur. I wanted to create a dynamic pose. I ended up changing it a few times because I was still figuring out what would be the type of pose I wanted to portray. Because it is a female centaur I'm drawing at the moment, I make sure to portray it with both gracefulness and power. Although female centaurs or centauroids are not mentioned in early Greek literature and art, they do appear occasionally in later antiquity. I personally love how in the contemporary concept art world there are so many variations of these creatures. It's really inspiring and I really love to see it. I go back and forth with the pose, but I end up going for a female archer. I make sure I like the silhouette, that the hair form is not messy or too complex. I add shadows, define the anatomy not by overdoing the rendering, but by hinting at the existence of muscles, bone structure, etc. Keeping it detailed, but fairly simple. I add the final details and finish the sketch. I start the next centaur sketch, this time is a male archer. I also use the same method of circles. I do feel it really helps me to construct the form much easier. I do some more details, I add all the anatomy parts, uh, the muscles and I try to keep the, the pose as dynamic as possible. Doing these action-based poses is really fun. I think the drawings, even though they are rough sketches, they still feel almost alive. I feel that sometimes in the past I struggled a little bit with doing action-based poses because I didn't feel like it transmitted the right uh, feeling. But since I've been sketching more and doing gesture drawing exercises, it has really paid off. I guess practice really is everything. In the next sketch, I decide to play with the form, making it both dynamic and powerful. I make sure to represent movement with the legs and tail. 
and try to do as much as uh, an interesting pose as, as I possibly can. With this next pose, I wanted to portray a more serene and calm nature that's more still and that is more reflective and not as aggressive and active as the other poses. That will be followed by a more aggressive pose from a male centaur. It is supposed to represent more of a battle spirit, hence the spear and the aggressive pose. I add some outfit details. I feel like it adds a nice touch to the drawing and gives us more information about the character backstory, the temperament, personality, all of that. I don't usually draw males that often, so it was quite a fun change uh, that made me look at the male anatomy. Um, it's always good to vary your subjects from time to time. I feel like sometimes I draw women way more than men, that's why I'm more used to the anatomy, also because I'm a woman, but it's good to never forget to do different types of subjects and expand your sketching horizons, uh, if that makes sense. I add finishing touches to the sketches and I'm quite pleased with how the sketchbook spread looks. Um, I think it's not too detailed, but it's not too simple as well. It's not just the gesture drawings, it's a bit more uh, rendered than that. So in the end I really liked the way uh, the sketches overall look. I proceed to choose one of the sketches to finish in Procreate. I photograph it, do the line work, block the form, add the shadows and values, and proceed to add color and details. I chose this particular pose because I feel it's quite dynamic and powerful and honestly any of them would work but it's a personal choice I think. I really enjoyed making this piece. So this is the final result of the painting. I'm really pleased with how it turned out. Um, I'm pleased with the rendering, the color choices, so I think in the end it works. So I hope you enjoyed the video and my process. Uh, this is my spread of the, the centaurs. I chose this one to do uh, a painting because I like the movement of her. Uh, but honestly, I could choose any of the, the other ones. Let me know if, you, if there was uh, one that you thought would be best to be finished in a digital painting. But I'm quite pleased with this spread. Uh, it was really fun to do. Because I've been drawing horses for my last video, like more regularly, um, I felt like it was much easier to do a centaur because I'm used to the anatomy, the movements of the horses and all of that. So it was quite fun. Uh, it's, I love mythology, I love anything that is related with fantastic 
art. I hope you enjoyed watching the video as much as I have making it. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you next week in another video. Bye!